Well, it's totally awesome fishy time again, but this one is different. This one is a two-part, two-part film. I just wanted to put two up for you. I put one up a few days ago, 48 hours ago. I'm trying to pile you guys with as many films as quick as I can. And this one, don't worry guys, there are plenty of fish in this one. A lot of tips in there as well, but the main thing is, don't miss part two. There's even more fish in that one and different species. Okay, geared up, sneaking in on them. I'm going to try. Wow, there's a nice fish just under me, guys. I'm trying to stick my head out here so you can see them knocking the lilies about. Oh, bosh. This is going to be about as simple as you can get. A fish hook, a piece of bread, just pinch it gently over the shank so they can't really see it. Check one's drag, which is quite tight because I was catching bigger ones than this before. I dip it just once. That's a good fish there. Right there. This is why I've got polarizing glasses. Okay, let's just have a look in here. See those lilies being knocked. Can you see those? If I keep dead still, hopefully you can. There's a big fish way over the back here, boys. Way over the back there. There's a big fish. There's a big fish. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch, 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 watch. Holy smoly. Holy, this is a good fish. He doesn't know he's hooked. Oh my word. Oh my word. Oh my word. Do you know what, people? This one's bigger than I thought it was. I'm going to walk him away from the swim. He's trying to get right in there. Okay. Action stations. Blue sky. Bent rod. Big fish. Wouldn't it be nice if it was a double as I thought, and I think it is. He hasn't really woken up yet. I think I'll get that net ready. Am I going to get that net ready? I like to dip it first time just so that when you do put it in the water for the fish, it does sink, it doesn't float. Now he's digging. Now he is digging. See if I could just turn him over. If he pings off, he pings off. This is a nice carp. This is a nice one. Oh yes, please. This is a this is a good double. This is a good double, folks. Seriously, he's in the net. He is in the net. My word, what a fish for a first fish! What a good job I put a polarizing glasses on. I'm calling this one pretty close to eleven and a half to twelve. Call it what you want, guys. Eleven seven. Eleven pounds seven first cast. So it's a quick one guys, because this one's a bit of a nutter. And a great big paddle of a tail there. Back he goes. Funny mark, scales missing off that side. I don't think I've seen that with a carp before. Yeah, same the other side a bit too, yeah. Just get him off, he'll be gone. Well people, that was a hunch. I mean, I've done really well on floaters this year. Free line, target your fish. Do you know what, I could have a few more casts. I've got two loads of bread left. Now, keep your bread covered over or in the shade. If it is anywhere near the sun, it will dry up and it won't be quite so good. So I'm just gonna break off. The best bread is not this sliced bread, I'll be honest, it's all I can get, because I say I forgot all the, all the dog biscuits. Makes no difference, as you've seen. I've absolutely plastered some bread over there in an effort to get some up for the camera and I think I might even take a look around the corner here first see if there's any come up so I'll put some I'll put some bread like right underneath the lilies but as you can see see it starting to drift across it's going to go all the way across there I feel it's going to get eaten but if I picked a fish up taking it over there I'm going to have a long cast to get to it and it's always obviously always tougher setting the hook at distance 
I see nothing there. See, I mean, I've had this before. You get fish feeding, you hook one, it puts all the others on edge. It's wind. Look at it, just bending these over. You might or might not hear it in the mic, but it is a bit of a pain. The benefit of floaters is I can look anywhere, scanning all the way around here. And as soon as the fish comes up, I'm going to see the ripples. So it tells me which way to move. I feel along that bank there would be a good spot for big fish. Now listen, we're only after a couple and then I'm going to try and find one with a fly rod. I don't really... I'm going to catch carp. I could sit here and catch them all day. I'm trying to look for slightly better fish, to be honest. I'm going to have one cast over this way. I see some very small ripples over there. I'll tell you what else I can see. Let's check that drag. I see up that tree afloat. So that tells me somebody else has found some fish over in that corner. I tried to cast, cast too far and gone up the tree. Another tip is try and get the bread either in the shiny patch of reflection or in the dark of a tree or a bush. If it's in the dark you'll have a much better chance of, uh, of spotting the take. Nothing so far. I've got the line across my fingers. Don't really need it because I'm watching visually as well. And you can see how that's, that bread's drifted. Those fish are back. They're not no longer here. They're further back. That is the problem. As the wind pushes the bread away from you, then it pushes the fish with it. That is the downside of drifting, floating grass. I might try one at distance for you, just out of interest. I can see some waking over there. That's a V going through the water. Tells me there's a fish over towards that big oak tree. Well, you see here, I'm just letting my bread sit in the middle waiting for fish. Initially, when I hooked that bigger one, I saw the fish and was able to present the bread to the fish, thus avoiding all this time wasting, waiting for something to come up. I don't cast normally until I actually physically see the fish. Let's try one. You get, if you get two casts out of a piece of crust, you're lucky. Once it's been wet, it falls off the hook. Okay, now I'm moving around. Here he goes, one right underneath, so I can see that shadow line of where my bread is over there. Also, if I get a left to right wind coming down this channel down here, it's going to put a belly in the line, so when I pick up the strike, after say 30 seconds or a minute, be a big belly in the line, you don't connect with the fish so well. And you have to be careful of what they call mending the line. Say there's a belly from the rod top to the bait, picking up and laying it back like this. You don't want to do it moving the bait at the same time, because again, you could spook the fish at the moment that they just come up to take that crust. There's one. I see one now. I see an individual fish. It's very, very muddy. It's difficult to see them. I'm going to go for there. Oh, <laughs> pinged out. A little bit quick on a strike there. Here's the hook. No sweat, it just pinged out. It happens, I was a little bit keen there. Now there's a decent fish move back there. But even so, you can see, like I pricked and lost that fish over there, they get wary. Can you blame them? So I'm just scanning left and right, left and right, left and right. I don't really want a small one. Three or four pounds. I can catch them, but I'm looking for the individual fish. Or if I see one out there, I will cast for it. And because sometimes you'll hear that sucking noise. See, there's some coming up here, just down there, but they're not that big, about four, four or five pounders. And then I've lost my light. Oh, here's a waking fish. Can you see over there? Ah, oh. red came off. I reckon he's going to turn around and take that. That was, let's go and see if we can catch you guys what we call a waking fish. It means it's making a wake as it goes along. It's a bonefish term. Give yourself a bit of bread. That means you don't always have to chum them. But obviously it's handy if you, uh, if you do, it cuts the corners. We might be able to see a cruising or waking fish. So what I do is I identify them by calling them cruisers, which are ones I can physically see the carp, you know, the shape of the fish itself, or wakers. That's where their dorsal fin 
is just cruising along under the surface, just making a tiny little V wake. I've thrown some bread out and I've got a feeling some of the bread might have drifted down here. There's some down there, it's untaken. It'd be nice if I could spot either of those for you. Okay, some lovely flowers here. You now there's a load of mud here. So I know there's a carp digging in the bottom, but I don't actually see any shapes of them. These bays like this look uh, sort of classic sort of spot for any food to drift down naturally. So if I was a carp, tench, roach, anything like that, I would be down in this area. The last time I fished this, it was nothing like this. It's come up really well with these, the yellow iris and all the other plants. It's definitely growing up well. There's mud coming up in the corner there. I think there's a carp way, way, way in the corner over there, but I can't really get to him. I could try just one random cast there and just let it drift along. Again, you can see the line is going to get bellied there. Oh, there's a fish right in front of me. Oh, he wasn't a taker. I'm not sure, he's just got, probably got a lice or something like that just jumping. Go past him. Keep the bail arm shut, check the drag every now and then. And I just like to keep pretty much in contact with that piece of bread, but without moving it, that's the thing. There's a good fish moved over there. Now there, from up where I am, that could have been my bread drifted down there. And that I would only reach with using a controller float or a waggler. No, let's move back up again. Plenty of ripples just over here. The bread is all gone, so since I walked down the other end, down there, it's got quieter, they've eaten it all. It doesn't take much roach, rud, they'll all chew away at it and knock it off. Smaller carp as well. Right now, I've thrown a line of bread close in, all the way along here, about 20, 30 feet, so that I can easily see on my vision here, anything coming within about a 30 foot length. I can just stand here quietly, or possibly by that bush would be better, and there you go, fish came up just in front of me. And look at my shadow down here, because they can see my silhouette against that sun up there. So I'm going to try and stand in here. You need everything uh, in your favour. I heard that one. If I just stand slightly to one side, just dip it once. See, now there's a fish there, and there's a fish there. I can see the ripples come in. So it enables me to cast either way over 30, 40 feet, you know, distance. Just let them get a bit confident feeding, or see if I can't target one underneath the surface. And what I do as soon as I see the fish, is my tip, this piece of bread here, it's damp, it's wet, just plop it straight into their face. Don't worry about spooking them. You know, a foot in front of them, it's close, three feet, it might be too far. Getting a lot of fish moving now, guys. Getting a lot of fish moving. There seems to be quite a bit of activity straight in front of me there. In certain areas, they seem to be... Here we go, here we go. Oh, there's two I've missed in a row. Out we go. Let's try again out there. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, three in a row. Here he comes, here he comes, right over there. Oh, he's took one piece just, just away from mine, about a foot away from it. I don't know whether to move it or not. Pretty sure he's going to want to come back there. The minute I move it, just do it slowly. I feel he's further over. Ah, oh, sinking. When it sinks like that, you can always touch ledger with your fingers across the line and you can actually leave it there for about 30 seconds or a minute and you'll feel the pull. If not, wind in, start again. There's a nice fish, there's a nice fish. I can see it, cruiser. Did he hear that? Sometimes they'll hear it, have you got it? He's got it, boys. He's on. I feel this could be another nice, halfway decent fish. I've got him down as nines or upwards. I'll just walk him into the uh, platform. And you see what I'm using is an Avon rod. 
you can do this with ledger rods, quiver tip rods, well this is the Avon quiver tip rod without the quiver tip section. Float rods, you can try it with float rods as well. You don't need special carp rods to catch carp. That's a common carp. Not a bad size, not a bad size people. Not a bad size at all. I think it's I think it's Le Double. Le Double, Le Double, the French one. Le Double. You might just go ten. Go on back wind as well. Yes, sir. -y. You cannot beat a loaf of bread. I can't tell you the last year I had a phenomenal year on bread. Absolutely phenomenal. Maybe it's eight or nine this one. Rod's telling me it's ten, but looking at it there, it's probably eight or nine. He is kicking butt big time. He just does not want to roll over. Yes, yeah, a smaller one. I thought he was bigger. All fish are a bit bigger. He's in. Let's check him out, boys. Let's check. Yeah, maybe he is bigger. Maybe he is a bit bigger. Just try him. I don't normally bother weighing many fishers. Tend to be doing it this year more than ever. I just guess them. No medals for it, but. No, he was in the nines. Nine two. Nine two ish. Close to double. Still a great fish to catch. Yeah, I can't. Over the moon with a nine pound barbel. Back he goes. Well, right, I feel, guys, it's uh, fly rod time. These are the dried dog biscuits you can get. You can get several different makes of biscuits. These are just ones that Mike's dog won't be, eat, be eating. Doesn't like them apparently, but the fish do. So you can throw them in hard to get fish chummed up like this. It's basically what you're doing ground baiting on the surface or chumming. Or what I like to do is have them, these are ones that are frozen and been thawed out. I soak them, so you just damp them and soak them. And look, totally different, let me show you. Can you see hopefully there? They're lighter where they've taken the water in and they're bigger. And if you fish those on a hook alone, they're nice and spongy. They're a little bit squishy and spongy, so I like those as well. But well, I personally don't eat dog biscuits when I say I like them as well. I like using them, not eating, wet dog biscuits. So I'm going to try and get, I'm not going to use all these to be honest, to be fair, so I want to try and get them preoccupied on a certain size, small. Now flies, it's hard to call, I have caught carp on trout flies, bushy flies, bushy patterns really, granums and things like that. This is a, a bread shaped fly we're going to call it a fly because it floats on the surface there is no bait used that's why it's flies it's called flies and these are these were given to me by somebody else they're used as a tag so that if you're in a glare out there or even on the dark you can see this color there can you see that so that's quite an interesting one um one type there i've got several here do you know i can't even remember who gave me these it says carp flies on them that's all that matters i don't want them blowing away now as well as making like these material ones, or what they call sort of sight indicators, you'd call that there. I hope, I'm hoping you can get this sight indicators. They make them out of, wait for this, bits of cork as well. So the cork represents a piece of dog biscuit, correct? There you see. Pretty, pretty much the same, pretty much the same. I hope you can see these. And again, in shiny conditions, it's hard to see these, so they put super glued a black piece of foam on there. So that actually is your sight indicator. So that's quite clever, isn't it? Make sure I put the right one back in there. So you can have them caught, you can have them, you know, made out of different types of foam, like this. This one's got, got bright orange target indicator on it. I'm gonna try the white, because I had bread out there first. I've got the cork ones to try. And then I've got the ones that I used to use. Make sure these don't blow away. It's a very windy day.
I've got these ones which are called the famous hedgehog fly. Now the cork ones, oh, I can't even get it open. The cork ones are quite hard. But this one is made from deer hair clipped down because the deer hair follicles, yes, I said follicles, the hair fibers are like tubular and they got lots of air in there. So it's a fly dressing material that's used for trout fishing a lot. I just stick him in the tip of my finger there, out, I can't. I can hold him like that. That looks like a big dog biscuit and that's about one of the best ones you can get. And of course you can clip that smaller and smaller with a pair of scissors, should you so wish. I'll put it up there, can you see it now? Hopefully. Now I'm gonna be using a bread one. There's one here, which is, you get it out, Hopefully you can see that. I don't know what the angle on this camera is. I'm guessing everything. But that one is a clipped deer hair with a white sight indicator. So you'd fish it, say, in there, where it's dark. The one with the black tag indicator, you'd fish out on the glare. So what I've got to do is you've got to either see a waking fish, a cruising visual fish, or you have to get them feeding on your chum mixer biscuits, dog biscuits, or bread, whatever, to try and be able to present to a fish. Let's get a bit more of these biscuits out there. Who knows? Possibly they've never even seen a fly in here like this before. There's a reel at the bottom here, so that your hand is over the top on the weight here, because you're swishing it backwards and forwards. Try, because there's no weight on the fly, is there? There's absolutely nothing there, nothing at all. The weight is in the fly line, which in this case might be, let's say, double tapered. So this fly line will be thin at this end, the more I strip out here, it gets fat, which gives it weight or density for casting, for loading up the rod, and then it will get thin towards the other end. You can also get various different tapers, shooting heads, forward tapers, that sort of thing, for different casting. If you're a beginner and you want to try it, just a regular forward taper, about a number seven will be good. The rod, I think, is a nine foot six, this one. Does anybody know what it's called? I use it for bonefish all the time. It's one of my best bonefish. It's called a Martek of England, which means nothing to me except that it's my bonefish rod. Right, I can see some small dimples here. Now, when they get going on these chum mixer biscuits, they're much smaller targets, so, so they're not going to be slurping and taking it down like um, kids with a Mars bar. They're going to be nipping at it a bit. You've got to let them turn down before you set the hook because you can't strike hard with a fly rod, it's so soft. A fly rod is for casting, rather than actually hooking a fish. Okay, I've just got an individual fish moving. I'm going to try him. I've got to put it right in his face. There. Missed him. He's gone the other way. Now, the benefit of the fish... Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Here he comes. He's looking for it, he's looking for it. I'm on first cast, boys. First cast. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever it was that gave me that white fly, thank you very much. It works. That's the first time I've uh, used that particular one. And of course, the benefit is the fly rod. You haven't got uh, much in the way of power back up when the fish gets close. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Fly rods. Fly rods are designed for casting, not particularly for playing fish. These are called a direct drive reel. There's no drag as such. The drag is on my rim here, my fingers, not my thumb. So on my thumb there, I can release it or I can just put pressure on there. You wind down, you pull up. The principle's the same of fighting the fish. This is a smallish common. But you can see with a fly rod, I can pick it up and I can put it down very, very fast and very accurately. And it doesn't spook the fish because there's no float, there's no float controller, there's no bubble floats, there's nothing going on in the water, not even a net. There's nothing crashing into the water. You can drop it onto them very, let's get in quick, I can. He's in. Let's see if we can show it. You can drop it onto them without spooking them, that's what I'm trying to say. It's very efficient. I've, I, well, I've had a go, I've had, I've not, I, don't, I don't think I've had a 20 pound on a fly. People have. I think some people have had quite a few 30 pounders. They just, it's just their thing. Now he sucked that down there, look. There's the fly, straight out. Who would have thought that carp is taking that? There's a reel at the bottom here, so that your hand is over the top 
on the weight here because you're swishing it backwards and forwards try because there's no weight on the fly so there's absolutely nothing there nothing at all the weight is in the fly line which in this case might be let's say double tapered so this fly line will be thin at this end the more I strip out here it gets fat which gives it weight or density for casting for loading up the rod and then it will get thin towards the other end you can also get various different tapers shooting heads forward tapers that sort of thing for different casting if you're a beginner and you want to try it a, just a regular forward taper about a number seven will be good the rod i think is a nine foot six this one does anybody know what it's called i use it for bonefish all the time it's one of my best bonefish it's called a martech of england which means nothing to me except that it's my bonefish rod right i can see some small dimples here now when they get going on these chum mix of biscuits they're much smaller targets so, so they're not going to be slurping and taking it down like um, kids with a mars bar they're going to be nipping at it a bit you've got to let them turn down before you set the hook because you can't strike hard with a fly rod it's so soft a fly rod is for casting rather than actually hooking a fish okay i've just got an individual fish moving i'm going to try him i've got to put it right in his face there Missed him, he's gone the other way. Now the benefit, of the here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Here he comes, he's looking for it, he's looking for it. I'm on first cast, boys. First cast. <laughs> Whoever it was that gave me that white fly, thank you very much, it works. That's the first time I've uh, used that particular one. And of course, the benefit is the fly rod. You haven't got uh, much in the way of power back up when the fish gets close. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Fly rods. Fly rods are designed for casting, not particularly for playing fish. These are called a direct drive reel. There's no drag as such. The drag is on my rim here, my fingers, my thumb. So my thumb there, I can release it or I could just put pressure on there. You wind down. You pull up, the principle's the same of fighting the fish. This is a smallish common. But you can see, with a fly rod, I can pick it up and I can put it down very, very fast and very accurately. And it doesn't spook the fish because there's no float, there's no float controller, there's no bubble floats, there's nothing going on in the water. Not even a net. There's nothing crashing into the water. You can drop it onto them very, let's get him quick, I can. He's in. Let's see if we can show it. You can drop it onto them without spooking them. That's what I'm trying to say. It's very efficient. I've, I, well, I've had a go. I've had, I've not, I don't think I've had a 20 pound on a fly. People have. I think some people have had quite a few 30 pounders. They just, it's just their thing. Now he sucked that down there, look. There's the fly, straight out. Who would have thought that carp is taking that? Now the chub mix of biscuits have gone right out there, people. So, I'm easily able to get out there with a fly rod. I'd like to be able to see the fish. I'm gonna watch that tree at the back. Because I need to see them. I need to see them take it. They are eating those biscuits like you wouldn't believe. This is gonna be a sure shot, I feel. On this fly, I might even try the cork in a minute. Oh, come on, people, give me a break. Just at the right time. The critical moment. See how I can pick this up? Oh, that's a better cast. Now I can see it against the dark. They're eating those biscuits out there, nipping away at them like you wouldn't believe. I can still see my fly. It's just going to drift into that shiny patch. So I'm going to move across. Here he comes. Missed him, because it was a distance. All right, that's that sun. I'm blaming the sun this time. You can just see how they're getting further and further away, because the biscuits have been drifting further out there and carrying the fish with it. I need to bait up down here again. Now, where's my fly to? No, I'm going to strip this in, I'm going to fish 
about there. Here he comes. There, there he is. There he is. He took that as sweet as you like. If anything, because I can drop this more accurately and quickly into the face of a fish, it's probably even more efficient than using bread on the hook or bait, you know, just bait on the hook. Make sure you don't tread on the fly line, people, when you uh, leave it all coiled around your feet. Oh, a little bit bigger. And of course, yes, 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 the net's back here. Leave it there, Graham, for goodness sake. Now, when you're fighting a fish, you would generally try and pull it back into the net like this. Don't do that with a fly rod, because it will snap. It's not designed for that. That's a bigger fish. See, like this, just ease it in slowly. Just roll it. I think he's in. He's in. That fish is probably eight pounds. So you can see people, there's a fly right in his mouth. Nice, nice common. Nice big tail on it. And then, oh, what did he do that in my face for? All of my glasses, the lens. Four carp, two for two, two on the fly, two on bait. Game on. Put the net where it should be, Graham. I must have, I wonder how many miles I've walked over 60 years of fishing backwards and forwards on the bank just to get my net. I've probably been to, it, it, it to New York or something. Because a fly, I can cast that straight out. It's not, it's not, it's not damaged or anything. So we peel a load of fly line out like this, which is our casting weight. We gradually work it out by swishing it backwards and forwards. The more line you get out, the more weight you have Look, I'll show you to flex the rod up. Let me see if I can show you like this, because it's fun. Don't buy expensive fly rods for carp fishing, please. Expensive reels. Just get cheap ones. Get second-hand ones. Get second-hand line. Just give it a go. Get hold of a club. Look, you swish it backwards and forwards, and then you let it go out. Bang. It's fun to do. And I'm going to get... Oh, what did he have to take then? Now, that's in a ripple, so that's why they start to put those little tag target indicators on there for when it's really tough to see what they're doing. And you can see a snaky line there, I should have stretched it, but it's obviously been stretched by the fish a bit. I might actually throw some biscuits out up here, let's do that. Oh, this fish, 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 fish. Look, I can bang it right in his nose. He's looking for it, he's looking for it, he's looking for it, oh my god. Oh, I banged it right in his nose. He must have heard that. He's looking for it. Okay, now I've got him. Now he should be see. Turn left, turn left, turn left. He's got it. He's on it. Oh, he's on it. He's on it. Get it down your neck. Ooh, he's turned off it, you little. That was a decent fish. Oh, it's the sun's gone again. Here it goes. Now I'm just guessing, people. I'm absolutely just guessing when there's a swirl in the area that I think my biscuits are. Really annoying for fly fishermen. Let's go further across with it, slightly slacker. That wind is picking up, it's defeating the object. I'll be baiting up here because these biscuits are flying. This is the wind is actually the start of the big rainstorm coming in tomorrow. So it's a no-go zone fishing tomorrow, which is why I've... Let's go a bit further across. Which is why I've taken the trouble to come out today. Man, they're going nuts over there. Ah, oh, right, that's on the money. I just can't see that fly. There was a big one there. It's quite frustrating when you you're thinking you see a big fish and you're not quite sure. Here he comes, here he comes, missed him. I think that was a decent fish, guys. 
I missed that one. You see, I can put it straight back down there. Whereas I'd be baiting up the hook again if it was bread. Anything else I'd be baiting all the time. It's one about three feet back. Move the angle a bit. There's, there, there's a free swimmer. There's a free swimmer. Looks awfully like a chub, that one. Here he comes. Oh, close. So I threw it straight back down. I missed the fish and put it straight back down in the same spot. The benefit of fly fishing. I'm a maximum casting range now. Way, way back over the other side. We're going to pick up, have another throw. See if I can't stretch it right out there. Because there's so many biscuits, they might actually want the biscuit, in fairness. The biscuit fly, I'm going to call it, rather than the white fly. Now they move left. One throw. There's a load, a load of carp there. They're all over those biscuits. Come on fish, come on, let's hit one at range. I'm starting to see some cruisers, guys. There's one decent looking fish, oh he's turned the other way. Oh, he's turned back this way now. That's on him. Took it and spat it out, people. Took it and spat it out. Would you Adam and Eve it? Took it and spat it out again. You wouldn't have thought he's... Uh, he's he's uh, spooky. Scattering them all in close, people. Within casting distance, but also hook setting distance. And being as I've got that white fly, I feel a little bit of bread in amongst it. Wouldn't go amiss. Just to get them back onto uh, to white, as it were. They like the dog biscuits, even if Mike's Jack Russell doesn't. Got him. Got him, boys. I'm going to walk backwards to clear my line. Now I'm on the reel. Get over here. I don't want to go for those tree roots and overhangs. If we can help it. Digging, digging, digging. Quite a nice fish again. I've got him down as an eight pluser. Maybe wrong. Wow, he's stripping a bit of line then. You see, they're great. <coughs> they're great sport on these fly rods. And uh, you get yourself a cheap outfit and have a go for them. It is, I would suggest, quite amusing way of catching them. And it's not messy, is it? It's not a messy, baity, gunky type of way of fishing. Now he's a six, six pounds or so. That's a grumble he's catching six pound fish on a fly rod. Mind, I've had bonefish on this rod, so quite confident with it. All you do is just finger pressure the reel here on the rim, or you pinch a line through here, but don't lock it off. Just let it slide under pressure. So I'm just letting this slide through my finger under pressure. So he can take line when he wants. 
I want to apply extra pressure, I put it on the rim. Just let the rod take all the shock absorbing of the fish. There's a bloke down there fishing, see him? Can you see that bloke? What's he down there fishing? He's in my swim. Oi! Get out of it, you! Yeah, you! Out of it! If I get this one in, people, ever, I am going to try one of those other flies. This is a hard fight in common. He's in, boys. Another fly. I found I'm doing better with the fly than I did with the bread. I don't know how he's going to behave himself. He might be one of those commons that actually behaves himself. But not a bad fish, I think you'll agree, for a fly rod. There he goes. Off you go, boy. Gone. You know, I said I was going to change that brown fly. I can't be bothered because I've seen fish rising all over the place out there. <laughs> I think I've got to try the, the white fly again. You know, I said I was going to change that brown fly. I can't be bothered because I've seen fish rising all over the place out there. <laughs> I think I've got to try the, the white fly again. There is any amount of carp way back there, but they're almost beyond my casting distance, in fairness. They are everywhere out there. I've now gone over to the chum mixer fly with the clipped deer hair there. Hopefully you can see this there with the white foam sight bar on it. We're going to give that a go. I think that's no barbless, I think it's a barbless hook there, all barbless here. Barbless are much easier, even with flies, you don't, as long as you keep the line tight, you won't have any trouble losing fish. Let's go to try this. So it's a, for the, see what it is, let me show you this. It's worth noting, I mean it's all about instruction and that really, I'm no instructor but I just tell people tips. Right, the object of the exercise is, the fly is going to sit on the surface like this. So from the fish's point of view, if you can see up there, he can't see that white sight bob. He sees the biscuit. From the angler's point of view, you're looking down like this onto the water. You can see that white sight bob. So that's the idea of the target being glued on the top. So he seemed to have gone a bit quiet. I've lost one fly up the tree. I don't want to lose any more. I thought I saw a really big fish come up that time, but possibly not. Might have been two fish, somebody to get one fish behind the other. Makes them look bigger than they are. No, there was a bigger fish in there. There's definitely one that looks around about double figures. Where's he gone to? Where's he gone to? Need a bit of advanced warning with him. I can see the biscuit, but I can see the white sight bob really really easily it looks like a piece of bread out there i've got to be honest and the sun's going around that's giving me more glare problems thanks for watching that film guys i hopefully there are some interesting tips for those of you who are starting up fly fishing but this was just one afternoon i move lakes there is a part two i caught a lot of fish on this afternoon. Sandwich went down my throat in one bite guys, I've got another catfish on. He's coming at 11 pounds 14. Let's get straight back. Something bizarre is happening, I hooked a fish up, it's peeled me way way out in the middle of the lake and then there's loads of bubbles I can see coming up. I'm actually using a piece of bread flake now in the hope that it sinks slowly. It keeps going to dig into the bank, so that's why I'm kind of curious as to what it is. Doesn't seem carpy. Just does not seem carpy. It's going trying to go under this bank. It's trying to get me right in the bank here. I think I got him out. Might have got him out. 